the femur is the longest and heaviest bone in the body it transmits body weight from the hip bone to the tibia when a person is standing its length is approximately quarter of the person's height and the femur consists of a shaft and two ends superior or proximal and inferior or the distal the superior end of the femur consists of a head neck and the two trochanters the greater and the lesser one the round head of femur makes up two third of a sphere that is covered with articular cartilage except for a medial place depression or pit this, this is the for the fovea for the ligament of the head in early life the ligament gives passage to an artery supplying the epiphysis of the head now this is the neck of the femur and it is trapezoidal with its narrow end supporting the head and its broader base being continuous with the shaft its average diameter is 3 quarters that of the femoral head the proximal femur is bent so that the long axis of the head and neck projects superior medially at an angle to that of the obliquely oriented shaft this obtuse angle of inclination is greatest at birth and uh, it gradually diminishes with age now uh, where the femoral neck and this uh, shaft join there are two large blunt elevations and these are called as uh, trochanters the abrupt conical and rounded is this is a lesser trochanter which extends medially from the posterior medial part of the junction of the neck and shaft to give this tendinous attachment to primary flexures of the thigh like the iliopsoas and now this is the greater trochanter it's large laterally placed bony mass that projects superiorly and posteriorly where the neck joins the femoral shaft and this provide attachment and leverage for the abductors and the rotators of the thigh this is the site where the neck and the shaft is indicated by this intertrochanteric line this is a roughened edge around attachment of the powerful ligament that the one is the iliofemoral ligament and now this intertrochanteric line runs from the greater trochanter and winds around the lesser trochanter to continues posteriorly and inferiorly as less distant ridge and this is known as the spiral line a similar but smoother and more prominent ridge the intertrochanteric crest joins the trochanters posteriorly and this round elevation on the crest is the quadrate tubercle in the anterior and the posterior views the greater trochanter is in line with the femoral shaft in a posterior and superior views it overhangs a deep depression medially and this is known as the trochanteric fossa the shaft of femur is slightly bowed that is it is convex anteriorly and this convexity may increase markedly preceding laterally as well as anteriorly if the shaft is weakened by loss of calcium as it occurs in rickets so most of the shaft is smoothly rounded and it provides fleshy origin to extensor of the knee except posteriorly here it has broad rough line and this is known as the linea aspera and it provides attachment for the adductors of the thigh this vertical ridge is especially prominent in middle third of the femoral shaft where it has medial and a lateral lip and medial lip continues as a rough spiral line and now superiorly the lateral lip blends with this a broad roughened region as known as the gluteal tuberosity and medially this is continuous as a narrow rough spiral line a prominent intermediate ridge this is the pectineal line is extends from the central part of the linea aspera to the base of the lesser trochanter and inferiorly the linea aspera divides into medial and the lateral supracondylar lines which lead to the medial and lateral femoral condyle 
and now this is uh, the medial and lateral femoral condyles these make up nearly the entire inferior end of the femur these uh, femoral condyle articulate with the menisci and the tibial condyles to form the knee joint and these menisci and these tibial condyles glide as a unit across the inferior and the posterior aspects of the femoral condyles during flexion and extension and this convexity of these articular surface of the condyles increases as it descends the anterior surface covering the inferior end and then ascends posteriorly and these condyles are separated posteriorly and inferiorly by this uh, centrally by this intercondylar fossa but merge anteriorly from forming a shallow longitudinal depression and this is the patellar surface which will articulate with the bone patella the lateral surface of the lateral condyle has a central projection and this is called as lateral epicondyle the medial surface of the medial condyle has larger and more prominent medial epic median epicondyle and the medial surface of the medial condyle has a larger and a more prominent medial epicondyle superior to which another elevation the adductor tubercle this is the adductor tubercle here and it forms a relation to a tendon attachment now the epicondyle these provide the proximal attachment for the medial and the lateral ligaments of the knee joint now if we talk of its anatomical position then these uh, two condyles are on a same horizontal level then the bone is in its anatomical position so that if uh, an isolated femur is placed upright with both condyles contacting the floor or the table top the femoral shaft will assume the same oblique position as it occupies in a living body it is about 9 degrees from the vertical in males and around 12 degrees which is slightly greater in females to bring the anatomical position it can be holded using a finger or a thumb um it will arrange itself uh, in its anatomical position when it's uh, held upright or hanged uh, with a finger so it is going to a little bend so it will uh, have 